I feel like everybody has an opinion about Tailwind CSS these days, and some of them are bad. And I get that. I get that maybe it's just it doesn't feel right. Okay, I, I'm not so good at like view and Svelte because the syntax, I'm more, I'm more close to React syntax. But here's what I wanted to do in this video. I want to share with you um, four reasons why I love Tailwind. I wrote a, <laughs> some of you are already so radicalized, you're not going to watch this, it's fine. I wrote a Twitter thread. Um, about it. I'll put the link under the like button, but um, I want to show you like why I believe Tailwind is is pretty good. Okay. Um, to do that, I have a little sample app here. So there's a little counter. Wow. Amazing. Um, what I want to do is I want to tell you why Tailwind is great uh, in four ways, starting with kind of the developer experience, how I feel, but also how my users feel, which is, you know, very, very, very much more important. Okay. Um, let's start with developer experience. I mean, like, look, this is Tailwind. Um, let's go over here and maybe make this a bit side by side. And so, I mean, off the bat, we have this awesome, like, uh, auto completion. So I come here, oof, I can, I can just fly background black, rounded, right? What else? Ooh, text white, padding one. Look at that. This is like no effort. And then maybe I could even do to my entire parent div, just go like padding four. Um, and of course, I can see exactly what P4 means. Ooh, like I get a rem and a pixel value out of the box. Like, I mean, so I'm able to fly. I literally feel like I have a tailbone. That's one thing. I've also, there's another nuance here with developer relations that I want to appreciate. And that is I've spent so much time as an engineer in teams um, discussing CSS convention, right? Between atomic CSS, hey, what's an atom? What's a molecule? To... Um, BEM, do we use BEM block element modifier syntax where it's like button underscore underscore element underscore underscore like this has been days, weeks of engineering time and Tailwind shows up and is like, write me, you know? So, I mean, how do you not appreciate that? Just, just by that alone. But those are two developer experience wins that for me make me not want to do anything else. Um, and also, this is responsive. Some people say, how is this like better than glorified style attributes? And I'll show you. So it's good because we can um, work with responsive. We can say for medium and above devices, the background is black, but otherwise the background is red. Um, and look at this, we even get colors. So, and now we just make this smaller. Oof. See? There, you have responsive. Um, you can't do responsive with style attributes. You also have other variants. Let's, let's, so if we, I don't know if I'm, if I prefer dark mode or not right now, but maybe I do. So if I, if I do dark BG black, um, okay. So I, yeah, I'm in dark mode. I didn't even know that. Um, and then dark text white. So now if I switch to light mode, you, I can modify it and you get all of this anyway. So that's the developer experience. What about the user experience? There's a whole side to this that I feel like users benefit from that we don't talk about enough. And really, I feel like users matter way more than me as a developer. Because like for every developer, there's ideally billions of users of your products. So how can we, how does Tailwind benefit them? Uh, I think really two ways. Um, one of them is just bundle size. Like it's known, it's pretty well known that we ship way too much code over the network. And networks are restricted by the speed of light. I made a video about this. I'll put a link up there about how they're limited by the speed of light. So we need to get them code as fast as possible so that they're serviced, right? Um, I think bundles with Tailwind may be smaller than without. And let's look at an example to illustrate. So come back here, we go to VS Code and I'll make a new CSS file. I'll, I'll say, say I have like dot box, right? And in here, I'm going to write display flex, probably the same rules I keep writing, you know? Awesome. And then let's say, you know, stuff happens, right? Um, and then further down somewhere else, I have like dot button. Uh, and maybe I'm using BEM. So like dot, it's, I don't even know how BEM works. Button and maybe a modifier with like this. Um, or let's actually not do that. Let's just do button. And we'll say, I'm, you know, I want it to be a flex box and so on. So what I have here is I'm repeating this. And you may think, oh, you just architect your CSS well, but we're in a team now with like five people who don't all have the time to sit and think this happens. It's a pit of failure that just you naturally fall into on teams at some scale. Um, and if I feel like the take that, oh, no, no, just be extremely mindful is a little bit over optimistic. So at some point, let's agree that this can happen, right? 
um, this means you're going to be shipping more code. Tailwind comes in and says, you know what? I'm just going to just like declare flex once. And automatically, if you use this, you don't need this. You don't need this. This is what? This is like 15 bytes. If we do it without Tailwind, this is 30 bytes. We're shipping like 15 extra bytes. And we kind of solve all of that by just saying, all right, we use a Tailwind's atomic class. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Similar, you have items center. Right, and it just has one rule. Um, we we don't do this. That's not atomic. But now we get rid of this. We get rid of, and look, we just we we reuse more. We ship less. We ship less code. People's data plans are not violated. They download smaller things, and they're happy because it's less downloads, less parsing, less etc. But the bigger win here is it's more performance. We all know that smaller things are faster. So Tailwind CSS, what's in a name? Me as a developer, I have a Tailwind with this auto-completion, with, with, with not having to think about conventions, and my users experience the same Tailwind when they download smaller CSS bundles that just work. Um, I think they could maybe be even smaller, to be fair, because some class names get really long, and I feel like Tailwind could hash them in production builds, but we're nitpicking. I think that's really the value I see in Tailwind. Let me know if you agree. Um, and if you don't, I would love you to disagree with like technical reasons in the comments. I'll leave room for that below. Also, link to the thread is under the like button. With that, I want to say thanks for watching. I appreciate you. And I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.